Hello. Welcome to um, our uh, simulation here today. Uh, my name is Allison Stevens, and uh, I want to uh, share with you how you can use the Process Simulate Human uh, to do some ergonomic analysis. The first ergonomic analysis tool that we're going to sh share with you today is something that we call the ergonomics metrics. I tend to call it the PDA report. So in the field of ergonomics, as you may know, um, often we're at requested to do a physical demands analysis, and it often is trying to understand the joints and the uh, activity that a worker would be required to do. And this uh, simulation tool, the Pro Process Simulate Human, is an excellent uh, tool to be able to collect that raw data needed in a PDA analysis. So, Camel, could you please uh, run the uh, simulation for us? No Today we've chosen a task of a parcel uh, sorting and then putting on a shelf. We have set the simulation up to have a fifth percentile female, and she's picking up some parts and putting them on her cart. Um, in, the, in the real job, she would probably be doing some inspection or some labeling and stuff like that. And then um, moving the cart uh, from her workstation over to her delivery of the shelves. So in looking at this analysis, we, um, there are many tools built into the Process Simulate Human. Um, and again, this one we're first going to look at is an overall uh, evaluation of the whole task in terms of what are the joint movements that we're seeing today and maybe ones that we would then be concerned with. Okay, great. So that is um, her completed that first cycle. Uh, Kemal, could you show us uh, how to then run an ergonomics metric report? We go, to task we go through. Computer. And analysis. First of all, we need to activate the ergonomic matrix report for Geo. And we just uh, create ergonomic report. Excellent. So in this case, we're um, we would then save it uh, or give it time to run that report and save it. Uh, for time, we've uh, run the report ahead for you. So, Camel, if I could just get you to open up uh, the completed report then, um, so that we can go through that. Can we go, yes, to the first page and up to the top, please? Okay, so the first thing you're going to get is your basically your header and your information. Um, we shouldn't be surprised that in most of this, um, uh, this job we have uh, a walking task, um, so you outlined in the blue. Then we get a percentage of the work cycle spent in different categories. If we could move it down a little bit, please. Um, we're seeing that these categories match a physical demands often. Um, and in this case, we have um, the operator working with both hands is really the one that's showing up. Since we saw this as a lot of lifting of uh, parcels, not surprising then, a lot of arm work, but in a lifting type of ca uh, category. Um, and not to be confused, there is no overhead work. The blues are different, but just not showing up because there is no overhead work in this simulation. If you can move it down now to the, um, have a look at it by joint. Here we're seeing that the neck region has a few times that it goes into a little bit of a rotation, but in general, predominantly green. Um, the back, even though we have a lot of um, lifting, uh, we see that the back uh, in terms of some flexion extension is predominantly in the green section with a little bit in the yellow. Um, if we could move further down, please, to the next joint. Uh, here's where we're seeing some of the, the red. So we've got a left wrist, a lot in the uh, extension area and in the supination area. So um, I'm just going to do one more quick check, a little bit lower. We should have um, very few in the next level. What's below the wrist, Camel? Is the shoulder. We've got the shoulder. Again, maybe just a little humeral rotation, but in general, mostly green for the shoulder. So our area of concern here is the wrist, um, and we're looking for that supination and uh, pronation uh, area. If you could go back quickly to the simulation, what we'll look at here is to try and identify what would have caused um, that 
as part of to be flagged within the PDA. It occurs actually, just because I've seen uh, looked at the simulation. Oh, yeah, we're going to start right from the beginning. He's just playing it backwards here. Okay, and as she picks up this flat one and right there. So this is a 10 kilogram, uh, right there, Camel, if you could stop that. This is a 10 kilogram part weight. Um, it was observed that she actually does this with one hand. So, and a rotation in the supination and the pronation in one hand to orient this parcel is what's being flagged then in the analysis as something that would be of concern, especially if you are using it as like a PDA, uh, 10 kilograms in one hand would, would, would be uh, potentially uh, an issue for a return to work type situation. Great. So we can see that this is kind of our good ergo kind of surveillance when we look at um, uh, this metrics. Camel, if you could then go back to the report, not only does the report do it by joint angle, on the next uh, page of the worksheet we do the, um, the reaches. So here we have all the reaches that have occurred. So within the software and the simulation, it's actually actually calculated for you how far that hand moves. So as you can see, we've kind of labeled them as red, yellow, green. You can set those up to be your corporate standard levels, but these are more or less the, the general uh, rule ones. And we see that we have one in that red category for a, a reach situation. Uh, we actually see, you can actually find out if you can zoom in a little bit, how far reach that is um, on that third one there. And if you go down onto the X axis, it should give you an idea of what that hand travel distance is. Yeah, you okay. can also see from the label here. So the value is uh, 935.9. Excellent, yeah. thank you. My eyesight couldn't actually read that, but that's great. <laughs> um, so uh, that's perfect. So let's go back to the simulation and let's see if we can find that reach. Um, it did give us a clue. It said it was the parcel two, and that we know um, from watching the steps of uh, and how we've labeled them, that that is actually at the end of this simulation. So she walks it over to the shelves. And she's going to put her her parcels up. Again, she did a one-handed lift there. So again, something that we know it potentially to be flagged. And right there, that is her extended reach that is being picked up as a long reach. So one would say, okay, is this by design? Or is this uh, maybe something that could be dealt with with potentially operator training? So ideally, it, we would recommend that she could go around the cart. That might be, you know, too much work. So maybe there is something on terms of how we instruct her to park the cart. Or maybe we could even put a center line down the cart and force the operator to go around the other side. We'd also maybe ask the question, does that one need to go on that side of the shelf? Or could she walk around and put it on um, a different part of the shelf? So again, this just gets us a big high level overview of some of the postures that are gonna be demanded in this task um, that would be able to be looked at and maybe designed around. So as you can see, a very powerful tool then. Um, we can also then use it in return to work because it has all the parameters of a PDA. So thanks for joining us today and let's look at some of the other videos um, and we'll show you some of the other ergonomic analysis tools within your process simulate human.